Hello and welcome to another episode of NSE Finvis Season 6 powered by CNBC TV 18. I'm your host Gautam Srinivasan and as always, we're here to help you navigate your personal finance journey. Today, we are in Bengaluru at the campuses of Manipal ProLearn to help their employees understand how to make the right investment decisions. So, let's check out the campus, shall we? Carrying forward the legacy of Manipal Global Education Services for over six decades is the institution of Manipal ProLearn. Manipal ProLearn has redefined learning in the professional certification program space with an expert faculty and an award-winning learning platform. The institution offers a wide range of course options across data sciences, technology, digital marketing and finance, which, in turn, help the young minds achieve their true potential. This week, NSC Finways, now in its sixth season, is at Manipal ProLearn campus in Bengaluru in a bid to help educate young professionals on the importance of financial planning and engage with them on the theme, Invest in Yourself, Your Path to Prosperity. Personally, if I say a financial literacy to me, I basically, you know, I, I would say it's the knowledge in terms of how I do my money management. How do I, you know, where do I invest at the start of the month? Where do I invest, uh, you know, in, in, do I invest in shares? Do I invest in SIPs or where? And also keeping in point of view that how much the ROI I'm going to get it from any of the investment, not immediately, but down the line five years or 10 years. So that's, that's what the key concept of financial literacy, which means to me. There may be situation we will be needing much more money according to our situation in the current market or not. So I think wealth management is very important for any individual. I think uh, efforts like this by NSC Finviz are an endeavor to educate the young investors and uh, help them to make informed decisions and thereby improve their financial prudence. Welcome to NSC Finviz Season 6 powered by CNBC TV 18. Invest in yourself, your path to prosperity. That's our theme for the year and we are here at the campus of Manipal Prolan here in Bengaluru so that the working professionals all here also understand how they can make more money. And to help them do that, we have two financial guides. Uh, Anil Rego joins us, and so does Uday Dhu. They'll be sharing their insights on the topic. So let's get right to it. Uh, the rules of investing. Let's start with that, because there are a lot of students in the audience. Anil, tell us about some of the basic rules of investing that people should follow. I think first, before we even get to investing, mm. uh, look at what are your priorities. Mm. Understand let's say the risk appetite that you can take. Mm. Uh, and, and the second step is then into uh, going and planning for it. Subsequently, get into the investment avenue. So that's a very quick, that's a you quick, know, uh, you know, three FAQ for, for folks who are looking to, to get that motivation. But speaking of motivation, the, the issue is when you, when you look at investing, it seems sensible after you reach a certain age. When you're young, when you look at the age factor, right? You're trying to save just so that you can you can live your life. And investing isn't exactly at the top of your mind in terms of uh, priorities. But there are lots of benefits to starting early on as well, right? I think the uh, the whole uh, the lure of spending and instant gratification is far too higher. So I think one very important thing to understand is that how do you now get over this? Uh, to get over this, you have to understand that your savings are not the money which is left after your spent money. So you say that, hey, earnings minus expenses is equal to savings, no. Earnings, then savings, then spending. All right. And this whole, you know, motivation, when we speak about motivation, there'll be a lot of questions, obviously, when you're young as to, you know, where do I start? Do I do it on my own? Do I take anyone's advice? Taking that first step, what would, what would you have to say to a lot of the students here who are wondering, you know, what do I do? first important to sort of educate yourself mm -hmm. and even if you would like to use an advisor right it's important that you have some basic background mm -hmm. because that will ensure that you know you are also not taken for a ride by somebody but when you start off possibly start off maybe with the tax planning mm -hmm. okay start off with you know as part of the tax planning maybe you can do an SIP into a, an ELSS fund a tax saving fund I think that's the first starting place 
all right and to the adventurous ones among us uh, you know someone might say you know why, why not i start with a stock and see how things work what would you say to them so i essentially say to the youngsters there are basically three e's right so educate experiment experience first of all educate yourself on what is available out there then try to experiment why i say when you are young you should experiment is that by the time you are 35 or 40 and the only thing that you have done is the LIC that your parents told you to buy and the PPF because an uncle told you that PPF is good and you don't know anything about anything else, then at 40 it is very hard to experiment, right? Because uh, a lot of uh, those lines have been drawn very thick in your head, uh, it is very hard to sort of change those habits then. So, I say that when you are young actually experiment, so that by the time you are 30 your savings have increased or by the time you are 35 and you know I have larger monies to play around with. I already know how different types of asset classes actually work. So, educate, experiment, then experience, yeah. All right. So, before we go to the audience question, any any uh, pitfalls to avoid when, when folks start this investment journey? One thing that most people do initially is possibly take insurance. You may have a lot of people, you know, hound you for sort of taking insurance. At early ages, maybe it is best to take a term cover. Uh, and you may not even need too much of it, you know, if you do not have dependents. The second pitfall I think is around the investment side. We find that people either take too less risk, uh, invest based on what let us say your parents tell you, uh, you know, all the traditional bank FD, the NSC, etc. or end up taking a, a crazy level of risk, getting jumping directly into stocks uh, and I, both of them are bad. Many times, you know, you keep a lot of it towards the end, okay. You say, okay, I will do my tax savings in March or in February and come, fe come February and March, you may not have the money at all, hmm. right. So, how do you, you know, plan it out, start at the beginning of the year. Maybe if you just put in maybe 5000 rupees a month or even a 2500 rupees a month, you would have been able to do much, much more. I think that is an important point because earlier we had that impression that I need a cert substantial base of money to start things off. But because now we have so many, so many investment options in that universe that you can start off with any amount of money that you manage to save. All right, the first name I will be calling out is R L Prasanna, if you could get up. Uh, right now I am 48 years, I would be retiring at 60. My goal is I would like to plan for my retirement. And how much money can you put aside? Approximately 8 to 10,000 rupees per month. So how far are you away from retirement? Another 12 to 13 years. 12 to 13 years. I think what you need to get first basics right before you get any answers from anyone is that, hey, what is it that I need on a monthly basis if I retire today? Now please realize is that at retirement, the other big thing that people think that hey, after I have retired, my risk appetite has suddenly come down. Actually, no, right? You have 12 years from now until retirement. On retirement day, you won't need all your money that you saved for retirement in the year one, right? You will need it over the next 20 years. So basically, from today, you have a 30-year time horizon at a bare minimum to invest. So I think you should be investing in equities because that is one asset class which will give you returns which are higher than inflation, and that's how you'll build the corpus. So, so those are my pointers to you. All right. I think on that note, uh, we can take a short break. We've been discussing the contours of investing in yourself. When we return, we'll be talking about planning investments so that you can retire rich. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. Welcome back. You're watching NSC Finviz Season 6, powered by CNBC TV 18. Well, earlier we discussed about investing in yourself. Now we talk about well, how to retire rich? It's an important question, so let's get right to it. Uh, you know, what's the typical investment template towards retirement with the average age, let's say, of 30 when people start their uh, investment journey? Take us through the typical investment template folks should have towards this particular goal of retiring rich. You need to look at your own age, uh, what is the right uh, risk profile. Mm -hmm. So if, let's say, you can afford to take, a, for a person who's at about 40, he can take about 60 percent of equity exposure. Mm -hmm. uh, within that, you know, spread it out saying that little bit of mid cap, large cap, uh, small cap. Multi cap funds yeah. are, are, a, are multi cap. Yeah. Okay. So, you can do a combination and you know, you look at your debt portion. I think a key way is to look at multiple avenues to achieve your retirement capital. So, now in this long journey, how do you protect this investment from tax erosion, especially such a long term investment? Understand that saving for retirement is difficult because retirement is 30 years away. You do not know how you are going to look 30 years from now. So, you do not want to save for that person. Once you get this in your mind, now you realize that there are tax saving opportunities that are available. Now, how do you 
actually help yourself from tax erosion is that one, do not keep churning your portfolio very often. Point number two, government has already provided you a bunch of these tax saving instruments that you can sort of use. Mm. So, one obviously people who are salaried you have the PF. So, then you have uh, uh, you can look at equity mutual funds uh, and the great thing about equity mutual funds is that uh, you do not pay tax until you get out of the fund. Then obviously, you have something called a new pension scheme, uh, which the government has introduced, which is essentially again focused on uh, saving for your retirement. So, use that. Now, use a mixture of this. All right. And we were discussing a, a sort of a 30 to 55 retirement journey, but post retirement, what should be the investment structure in your opinion? Depending on how your health is, what kind of wealth you have accumulated, you should have at least say 3 to 5 years of liquidity with you handy. So, that even if market goes through a very bad turn. You know that for the next 3, 5 years, even if I do not get anything from my money, I have enough money saved in fixed deposits and in regular bonds which are paying me interest that my regular income is going to be taken care of and then uh, essentially plan beyond that. But I will say that we should not worry too much about 30 years right now. Right now, the only thing that you should worry about is that can I save that 5000 rupees per month, can I save that 10,000 rupees per month and uh, if you take anything back from this session is that go and do something about it. All right, let us see what uh, the audience has to has to ask on this topic and I will be calling out a few names and uh, they can get up. My question is, how could I cut my unexpected expenses? Like when we are getting the salary and there are some questions or some after so much of planning, we are left with nothing like what we have expected that we would save this and mm. even after that we are not able to save this. Income minus savings is equal to expenses. So, if you think that at the end of the month I will go and save money, you will never end up saving money. First save, then spend. That is the golden rule. There are no other rules around it. I hope we have answered your question. Thank you so much. The next person I will call out is Deepika Shukla. If you could uh, get up. What combination of plan can we take for a better retirement? Suppose if a So, what, com what combination of investment products? So, what sort of investment products should one look at for uh, retiring and your view on ETFs? Yeah, so for a salaried person I think. Uh, like I said, do diversified avenues and a very important uh, value builder for you will be say equity. Uh, use systematic investments. Systematic investments you can start off uh, by say let, let us say doing ELSS funds which also help you save tax which means that you have a little more take home which ideally you know you can invest that as well. So, you have a little bit more money to invest uh, some more. Uh, so, first ELSS till you use a tax limit. The next would be say equity mutual funds. Uh, you, you could use a combination of as you go forward increase your number of funds. Uh, start off maybe with uh, large cap funds then you know supplement it with say mid cap, small cap at a later stage, but only invest in SIPs. Okay. Uh, then you would also have on the debt side. So, that is something which maybe you can use a liquid fund or short term income fund may be a appropriate thing to look at. The NPS is the other avenue. Uh, it is an interesting one because also you get tax benefit today. So, a lot of what I am trying to tell you is to that you know you use tax savings to increase your take home. Okay? And by increasing your take home then you are also able to sort of get that much more freedom to invest more. I think a combination of these should be good because all of these are long term avenues which tomorrow you can also utilize for your retirement. All right. I Thank hope you have answered your question. The final name I will call out for this segment is Chandan Kumar. My question is sir, if a person is 45 years old and he is financially secured, keeping in mind his post retirement phase, where should he invest? <laughs> he is not in the fear of losing money. Making money and managing money are two different skill sets. So, what you need to do first is that I think be very clear with yourself and your family and say that hey what is the money that we need to make sure that our basic lifestyle never gets hampered by anything else that I am doing. I think the other important thing for a 45 year old I am assuming with lot of money is that he has kids who have never had a problem with money. How do you teach your kids what to do and how to manage money, how to respect money because they never had to worry about money. They had just so much money all around right and, and those will be the larger challenges that you will be faced with. All right. I hope we have answered your question and on that optimistic note, uh, we will take another short break. Uh, but when we return, the uh, working professionals here at Manipal Krolan will pose more questions to our experts here and of course, they would love to answer that. Stay tuned. Keep watching CNBC TV 18.
Welcome back. You're watching NSC Finvis Season 6, powered by CNBC TV 18. Uh, well, we've discussed uh, how to invest in yourself and how to retire rich. The floor is now open to the working professionals here at Manipal ProLearn to ask anything they have to our experts here. So let's see in a show of hands who wants to ask a question. Uh, the gentleman in the blue shirt, if uh, you could get up. Uh, what are your views on the uh, cryptocurrencies and how, they, how do they serve as an alternative to your uh, traditional stocks and securities? Okay. And if somebody is to uh, go about investing in them, uh, what kind of uh, uh, like procedure or plan or the coins you would suggest? First of all, in India, uh, any kind of cryptocurrency is it's not, not allowed. Right? Yeah. So, so basically, yeah. that's, that's point one, right? So it kind of uh, cuts down our options of stuff that we need to do. I think if you understand this piece, keep a very small portion of your savings there. Customers came back to us very, very aggressively hmm. because we have a few large uh, high net worth individuals and they were saying that, you know, what is this, the flavor of the season you're not doing. So today they're very happy, you know, once it settles down, once it gets a little bit more legal standing, okay, is where I would touch it, but because there's no legality, it adds a whole new dimension to what you do with that and, and do you cross the line. All right, gentleman here in the in the blue shirt. Can we pass the mic here? Uh, I want to ask you, um, if you want to invest for a long term, let's say 20, 30 years, uh, so how would you uh, diversify your funds? Basically, a broad, what sort of broad approach you would take to investing in funds over a horizon of 25 years and what sort of mix would you look at? In 25 to 30 years time frame, uh, the challenge essentially is staying put. And to stay put is when you need to diversify. I would say that a more futuristic answer to that would be is that uh, you will very stand, soon start seeing that we will replace the large cap funds from index funds and uh, do mid and small cap funds. You do like an index fund to control cost mm. uh, and just get They're growing in popularity and, and just get benchmark returns there and then you will add these small and mid cap funds to give you that higher alpha and higher sort of uh, returns and sort of return. But better is to go to a financial planner yes. and uh, get a, a, a sort of customized output for your needs. So Supplement to that. I think, uh, let's say if you take equity itself, okay, one is you can diversify with styles. Okay, so uh, it could mean that, you know, some you do with stocks, say some you do with mutual funds, but only touch stocks if you are very comfortable uh, with tracking markets, tracking economic cycles, tracking companies, okay. Uh, you also have one more avenue, which is you can do ULIPs. Okay, again, if you do ULIPs, you have to do, you know, 15 years and stuff like that, that's when you can do. I think within uh, mutual funds, if you ask me, ideally maybe uh, you can vary the mix depending on your risk appetite, but I think even a simple thumb rule is to say I do one third into three segments of it. Maybe I do a large cap, I do a multi cap, and I do a small cap, okay? Uh, however, the, the point like, uh, the, the difference that I would like to bring across is, at different points, you may find that say the small cap valuations or the mid cap valuations get excessive. I mean, those are points when maybe with your existing portfolio, then, you know, it may be a good idea to either switch to large caps or to say that, you know, I want to be a little more careful or, okay, I switch to a balance fund or a dynamic asset allocation fund. I may go and switch to something even more conservative, which is a debt <coughs> fund, okay? So, so I would keep the investing style a little static, okay? but. Uh, you know, at times when say there's higher valuations, then I make a few changes. And also it could mean even in large caps, let's say if market has done extremely well, okay? And you know, it's a point like, uh, earlier the market went right from almost like 3,000 points to 20,000 plus, right? So at periods like that, I may just say, I may get out of equity itself for my existing funds, but I may just continue with my systematic investment. Okay, I hope we've answered your question. We have time for one last question. The lady in the red here. My aim is to become an entrepreneur. It takes nearly four or five years time because to save such a lot of money. Mm. And how mutual funds gonna help me in this? Discipline investing makes you money, right? And that's like, that was one of the key themes, let's say, of my book, you know. If you just ensure that you are being disciplined, even if you miss a market cycle, like I said, okay, you book profits and stuff, if you don't have that ability to do it, okay, even if you just continue with a very simple, disciplined investing cycle, I think that will really help you well. I think a little higher risk initially, say equity mutual funds, you can even do uh, systematic investments into mid and small cap funds, but ensure that you keep a time horizon of at least five years when you look at a mid and small cap fund. And again, diversify, you can, you should not do all of it in small caps, okay, do, you know, some bit in multi caps and as well as uh, things. 
keep in mind that while you're doing and taking higher risk, ensure that your foundation is in place, right? If I have, if I have an emergency, right, I should have sufficient money for it. So to that extent, keep liquidity, okay? So that liquidity can be, again, effectively utilized. Don't keep it in an SB account, okay? Keep it in, let's say, a debt mutual fund or at least a, a bank FD. The last point I can say is take complete advantage of taxation. All right, on that note, that's a wrap on this episode. Uh, I'd like to thank the experts for sharing their insights on the topic. The wonderful audience here at uh, Manipal ProLearn for asking very interesting questions on how to retire rich. And of course, thank you to our viewers for tuning into the show. See you next time. For beginners who didn't know, uh, who didn't have an idea on uh, investing, especially for the students who had just started off uh, their career now, it was very helpful. And people who knew a few things, tip on the do's and the don'ts were given here. It was truly informative, and you know, it gave me an exposure to new areas, such as uh, you know how to divert, how to you know build a context towards diversifying your portfolio looking at you know the large cap and mid caps and you know how to take decisions based on that that is truly informative uh, it was a nice uh, discussion uh, because we have students from various backgrounds uh, for them it is uh, it's, it's an opportunity or a flat platform to understand the uh, financial uh, products the financial literacy uh, I, I i think nsc and cnbc both are doing good in in uh, bringing you the financial literacy among the uh, students and among the working professionals and all that